Thank you. How about another hand for Doug taking you through the festivities? Thanks. You know, it certainly is good to be associated with this, helping people out and seeing rock and roll getting, the, getting involved in something good because they so often get unjustly maligned for things that people think they're responsible for. People blame rock and roll for drug use. People dream, ro blame rock and roll. But fundamentalists try to blame rock and roll for teenage sex. Come on, teenagers have sex because they're horny. Case closed. If you're going to blame teen sex on rock and roll, why don't we just blame incest on country and western, huh? Yeah. I should tell you a bit about myself. I'm the youngest of five kids. If, if you're from a big family, you know that by the time you get around to the youngest child, leniency has set in. My brother's the oldest. He'd get grounded for being 10 minutes late to dinner. By the time they got around to me, it was pretty much no heroin in the living room. Michael, you're not using the good spoons, are you? I had a lot of potential when I was a kid, though. I know that. Said that on my report cards every six weeks. Michael has a lot of potential, but he won't apply himself. Sound familiar? Happened to a lot of us. Do you figure somewhere a parent got their kid's report card, opened it up, took a look at it? Your child has absolutely no potential whatsoever. We'd hold them back a year, but frankly, it's a waste of milk. I put my parents through a lot. I was a problem child. I used to smoke a lot of pot in high school. Anybody else? I smoked a lot of pot. I smoked a lot of pot. The, z the zigzag man had a tattoo of me on his arm. Sometimes I have to explain that to younger people. Well, you see, the zigzag man is kind of the Spuds McKenzie, the late 60s, early 70s. My parents tried everything to get me to stop smoking pot. They screened my phone calls, sent me to a psychiatrist. Finally, they stopped selling it to me. That seemed to work. Teenagers shouldn't get high, though. You know why? Because they have no clue to begin with. That's why. Then they get stoned. They're just gone. I had this one friend in high school. Every time he got stoned, he'd try to tell me these car crash stories with supernatural overtones. He had like 50, 60 of these stories. I'd lift my head up from the bong, he'd be standing there. You want to hear something really freaking weird, man? My friend Jimmy left a party in his van. He was heading down the mountain to get some more beer. He went around the bend, missed the turn, went off into a thousand foot ravine. They didn't find his van for two days. Get this, dude. Stairway to Heaven was still playing on the tape deck. What a great Sears Die Hard commercial, huh? We took these seven drunk teenagers and put them in vans. A lot of pressure on kids to drink these days. Look at these beer commercials on TV. Now I see the night belongs to Michelob. The night belongs to Michelob. Yeah, notice they lay no claim to the following morning. No, because the next morning belongs to Bear Aspirin, that's why. The next morning belongs to Acme Towing. Jacoby and Myers. If you're gonna drink, have a good attitude, of course. Don't drive. My roommate in college, Jim Kiley, heavy drinking 19-year-old Irishman. He had a great attitude. He used to say, sure, drinking kills brain cells, but only the weak ones. <laughs> Speaking of aspirin, here's something that's puzzled me my entire life, perhaps you too. You ever wonder how medicine knows where to go in your body? How does it know? You take aspirin for your headache, Dones pills for your back. What, do they stop at a gas station, ask directions? What happens if I take a Midol? This stuff running through my veins. Excuse me, could you help me out? I am really, really lost. No, it's not even on the map. I've been driving around for hours. There's no swelling, there's no water retention. I'm lost. Hey, what's happening? How are you? How about a nice hand for this guy, ladies and gentlemen? I went to college, I majored in philosophy. Every parent's dream come true. 
my father said philosophy. Well, why don't you minor in communications so you can wonder out loud? Which is better than what he said to my girlfriend at the time. She was majoring in women's studies. He said, geez, must be hard memorizing all those recipes. I know, I had to live with the guy for 21 years. So I majored in philosophy, minored in communications, got out of school, landed a job as a morning DJ at an all-philosophy radio station. W-Y-M-I. I'd say things like, good morning, it's 8.05 on YMI. For those of you just waking up, <laughs> what's the point, really? Wow. You know, Stallone is now the chairman of the National Literacy Campaign. Stallone, celebrity spokesperson, National Literacy Campaign. What a gutsy move, boy. Cutting his own throat, too, because if he wipes out illiteracy, <laughs> who's going to go see his movies? So I'm dating again. I guess that's the big news of my life. I'm dating again, which is very exciting because because I'm married. Uh, no, I'm not married. I've never been married. I'd like to find that special someone I can grow with, someone I can nurture, someone who can straighten out my finances. You know that's what happens, don't you? Couples get married nine times out of ten, the women run the money. Best thing that ever happened to a single guy. Single men will spend money on anything but taking care of themselves. I know, I'm a single guy. I've done my laundry in shampoo. I haven't tried conditioner in the rinse cycle yet. We can't budget, we can't plan. If a single guy has seven lamps in his house, he'll wait till he gets down to one bulb he carries from room to room. And it wastes time because you gotta wait for it to cool down. That's why we leave our socks lying around. We need them for oven mitts. See, men are inherently irresponsible. Women should run the world. This would be a hell of a lot better place if women ran the world, I'm telling you. Yes, sir. And I say that because women like me more when I do. Um, women are always right, you know that, don't you? It's not good, it's not bad, it just is. Guys, how many times have you been between a rock and a hard place? Damned if you do, damned if you don't, there's no right answer. And if you don't answer, that's wrong, true, I've tried it. Here's an example, guys, you're with your girlfriend, your wife, whatever the case may be. She reminds you of something that you two did together maybe years earlier, and you don't remember it? Watch out. She says, honey, remember that time we did that together? Uh, no. Jerk but you put the shoe on the other foot, you ask her and she doesn't remember. Honey, remember that time we did that together? No, that must have been some other woman you were with. <laughs> Went dancing last week, you like to dance? There's another big difference between men and women. Women lose all inhibitions on a dance floor. Guys, on the other hand, traditionally more reserved, more self-conscious. Guys, back me up on this. There's no way you can dance, raise your arms higher than this, without feeling gay. What is that? It's right there. You hit that, you may as well go all the way. It's right there, that international gay line, right there. You people have been terrific. Enjoy the rest of the show. Thanks a lot. Good night. <laughs>